don't know. Maybe it would be easiest to go in the order. I think those five seem pretty. Sorry, the five that I put in bold. Yeah. Like. Okay. Okay. For the preferences. Yeah. Let's let's start with the preferences one, just so it's yeah, sort of in the order. And of course, I'm going to edit this later, but it's. one that I suggested? Uh, I think it's the utility platform. It's just like like unanimity. Oh, no, unanimity. Unanimity yeah. preferences, okay. Brilliant, brilliant. Okay, that's a good one. I, I wanted to do that one just to give an idea of how the, of, of how one goes through these proofs. You know, and it's, I think it's pretty s simple and straightforward, uh, but if you're not used to doing these proofs, maybe it's a little bit uh, confusing. So let me just pull that out. Properties of preferences, section two, three, four. Uh, da, 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 value functions, lexicographic preferences. I didn't. I did a lot. We did a lot on lexicographic preferences last time, so I didn't want to, you know, overdo that. Okay. So. Uh, Considering the properties of preferences, and preferences can be defined in different ways. So, what are some examples of uh, preference relations describing people's preferences over things, or some that we came up with before? Like lex lexicographic. Lexicographic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, what would be what would be something you might be more familiar, you know, used, used to using a sort of preferences that, that you've seen in your previous economics uh, economics modules? What do you mean, like, right. st like strictly preferred to or something like that? Yeah, well, that's the notation, right? But what I mean is, suppose you were going to try to describe some describe someone's preferences, an individual's preferences, over a bunch of options, uh, and perhaps perhaps those options even could be in uh, a space of two goods. What, what, what do we usually do in terms of describing their preferences? What are, what's the most familiar thing from sort of Econ 101? So suppose we're talking about their preferences over X bundles X1, X2. Suppose these could be real numbers, a real positive numbers. Yeah. So X1, X2 is in R positive. What? How do we? What sort of things we usually do with these? We like we assume you rank them. Right, but this could be. This here, here we're describing a space of an infinite okay. space, right? Well, so is this the like the trade-off between two different goods then? Yeah. So yeah. So we'd normally ascribe. I mean, what we're what we're building to is is the utility function. We normally ascribe oh, okay. a utility function and say, okay, maybe it's linear, maybe it's x1 plus alpha x2, or maybe it's uh, Cobb-Douglas, it's x2 to the, you know, alpha, or x1 to the alpha, x2 to the beta, something like that. Okay. So now we're taking a step back. So all the noise comes in just as soon as we're recording, right? The least sirens come by. So now we're taking, taking a step back and just thinking of the preference relations and some ways of sort of classifying these preference relations. One of which is the unanimity, unanimity rule, okay, and this is perhaps more reasonably applied to um, group preferences, but you could also think about it for individual preferences, right? But I think where some of this becomes interesting is when we try to think about, consider what are the results from individual preferences we can extend to group decision making and how to think about that. Okay, so the unanimity rule says the individual has in mind n considerations. So we don't just have two goods, we have possibly n different goods or attributes of goods or services or, you know, states of the world or qualities of the state of the world. And um, it says they have the complete... So what, what we're saying is here, there's, there's let's say, characteristics. Let, let's just make it simple. Let's call it x1... Xn characteristics, and 
the individual, or we could also think of this in group preference, in terms of group preferences, the individual has, for each of these, okay, not for all these all together, for each of these there's this relationship pertaining to it. So this is the one pertaining to the first, this one is X2, this pertains to the second, all the way through, this is a two, all the way through the preference, sorry, we usually write things in terms of the weak preference, Xn. Here. So x is all the same goods. X x one is one good. Yeah. X two is the amount of a sec is a second good. Dot yeah. dot 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 dot. Okay. Or the or the characteristic of that of a good. Yeah. You know, it depends on what we're evaluating here. You know, if, if it's social preferences, we could talk about the, some characteristic of the society or the outcomes in the in the future. Okay. So we have these these things here, but that doesn't these things don't tell me my preference over the bundle or the society's preference over the bundle X defined as X1 to Xn, right? It's just expressing preferences over each, it's just expressing some ordering over each element of this bundle. Okay, and you know, for instance, it could be the first one I prefer more, more to less, the second one I prefer less to more, the third one maybe there's a peak somewhere, right? So we, we want more, you know, wh whatever, or something good, we want less, inequality, maybe there's some optimal, optimal amount of, I don't know, uh, nature, I don't know, versus civilization, I don't, I don't always come up with good examples here. Right. So the unanimity rule is saying that the individual or the decision maker has in mind n considerations, x1 to xn, they say a parent may take into account the preferences of each of her children, and the preference is stated as, um, Define the binary relation, this particular preference relation, which we'll call, I don't know, maybe we want to put a subscript for unanimity preferences just to be clear, superscript, but let's just say this preference relation is defined as the vector x or the set of things x, whatever the mathematical object it is, is weakly preferred, at least as good as, sorry, I don't draw this way, it should look like that, weakly preferred y sorry, I have chalk up here this is a mess. We can prefer to y uh, if if I guess if and only if Element i of x is at least as good according to the to the to the metric for element i. Okay, so however much we value, you know, uh, uh, um, food, however much we value inequality in society, if it's society, but for an individual, it could be the amount of food, the taste of the food, the leisure time. If uh, for each of these metrics i, we have that it, that the, the element of bundle x, right, because x has elements x1 through xn, y will have elements y1 through yn. So each element of the bundle is preferred. Okay, uh, so I say if xi is weak or we at least as good or better, weakly, we call it weakly preferred, look like uh, mime in a second. Uh, and I could say for all i, or we say, or I sometimes write for all i, or for i uh, equals one, comma, dot, dot, dot. Okay, so in other words, what is this preference relation saying? It's saying that one alternative is seen to be at least as good as another if every element of that is seen to be at least as good by this criteria for uh, as the element of the other bundle, okay? And I could have a set of unanimity preferences, or one society could have a set of unanimity preferences, another society could have a different set of unanimity preferences because these operators can be anything. One society could think that, you know, there's there's no, you can't have too many parks, another society might have a max optimal number of parks in some intermediate value. But those are, 
But the unanimity, unanimity preferences is that we only say that an individual or a society weekly prefers it if they weekly prefer it for you. Okay, so an individual might say, say, I, well, this is in the text, I prefer a holiday in Jamaica to a holiday in France if Jamaica is better than France in all of its attributes. Or if the holiday in Jamaica is better than the holiday in France for all of its attributes. And so this requires that you're comparing them only on the same set of attributes. You can't consider attributes that one has that the other doesn't. Well, if it doesn't have any, if one doesn't have any of the attributes, so if one has, so if we think of like this first element to be like, beaches. If Jamaica has lots of beaches and France has no beaches, well, then Jamaica would, well, and if the person valued beaches, yeah. then Jamaica would be preferred to France on that, according to that attribute. And if Jamaica had more of every other attribute, then then it would be just strictly preferred to France. Yeah. Or not strictly, but it would be weakly preferred. To, if it had, had at least as much of every other, or was at least as valued for every other attribute, it would be seen as, as a vacation as least as good. And then if they both had things that the other didn't have, then you would say that neither of them was preferred to the other. Neither, we can't compare them, because this is all that this preference relation has, said, has told us. We can't yeah. even say they're indifferent. Um, and by the way, these if you look at the logic of it, whatever I say about these things, generally you can you can show that they apply to strict preference also, uh, which is defined as, well, you've seen the definition before. Okay, so I give an example for an individual. Uh, I give an example for a group policymaker. I can only state that we prefer the conservatives' policy if it is better than the liberal, over the liberals' policy, if it is better for everyone in our society. Otherwise, we don't have a group preference. Okay. Uh, all right, so now we can say, all right, what properties does this preference rule have? We can talk about the properties we talked about most were transitivity and uh, completeness. Uh, th those were those were two of the of the important uh, properties: transitivity, completeness. We, we also talk could talk about monotonicity, or which you know we can't really talk about here. Uh, we can talk about convex preferences. Can't really say much about that here, I think. Okay, so how do we know this is is this preference transitive? Yeah, I think so, because you're only comparing it on the same set of characteristics each time. So if it's at least the same or higher... I don't know how close you have to be. Yeah, okay. Say it again. Sorry for interrupting you. That's okay. Yeah, so if you're only comparing on the same set of attributes across the set, then um, it has to be at least the same or higher, because there's no other... If, if they're all higher across the whole set, and then that holds across different sets, then... It's going to be transitive, isn't it? I don't know if that's a good explanation. I just, I just, I, I think you, it probably is. I just, I'm not, I'm, I'm having a hard time following it. So, yeah. transitivity. I mean, it's, it's usually good when you're trying to prove something to just work directly from the definition and just try to. I mean, for for the intuition, that's really good. And then you say, okay, how does that correspond directly into the definition? Yeah. So we say that a preference relation is transitive. Transitivity is that uh, if A is at least as good as B, and B is at least as good as, or seen as at least as good as C, then A is seen as at least as good as C. So we just would have to show that for this uh, particular case. Okay, um, so how would I show that it's transitive? Well, let's say, as you, okay, I think I see where you're getting with this. You're saying that, okay, if one, if element A, or if, if bundle A is preferred to B by the unanimity preference relation, weakly preferred, I should say, to B by the unanimity preference relation, this means that every element of A is at least as high, or at least as, sorry, is at least as valuable by its preference relation to every element of B. Yeah. And the same thing for B relative to C. So we could go element by element, we could say that if so, so it must for A to be weakly preferred to B, it must be the case that X I is preferred, weakly preferred by measure I to element. Or let's say compare. So, so let's suppose X is preferred to Y. Uh, you know, yeah, that's okay. We can A B C X Y Z. Okay, 
If x is preferred to y by the unanimity relation, it must be that element xi is preferred by its own preference to element yi. Uh, and that must hold for all i. And if y is preferred to z by this, it must be that yi feeds zi. Again, this again must hold for all i. It must hold for, for 1, for 2, for 3, for 4. And if we've already stated that these preference relations are all transitive. That, that was, well, I didn't write it in the thing, but it's, it's stated in the, in the definition given. So which means that xi is thus weakly preferred to zi for all i, which means that x is weakly preferred to z. We have x preferred to y, y preferred to z implies x preferred to z. So that's, you know, it's sort of obvious, but I guess it helps us, like, understand how we would formally prove something and make sure we were complete. Oop, okay, and now complete, speaking of completeness, speaking of being complete, what about the completeness of this? So we, we've, we've proved pretty, pretty formally, I would say, that something is the case, that some property does hold for these preferences. Now, how do I prove that some property doesn't hold for these preferences? So to show that something, one thing to think about is to show that something doesn't hold in general. In other words, I want, I'm going to say that it's not true that any such preferences will necessarily be complete. All I would have to do is find one exception that, that follows what we stated here, these transitive and complete relations applied in this way, uh, and that it's not complete. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so how, how would you how would you state so the uni unanimity is sorry not unanimity sorry completeness is just saying that for all bundles x and y for all I don't know for all x y where these all have many elements either x oh and here I get to give a nice video redefining completeness so either x bundle is weakly preferred to y or y is weakly preferred to x. Okay, and what kind of or is this? Is it an inclusive or or an exclusive or? In other words, is it the kind of or that is it the kind of or that I say when I say, okay, we're either gonna do the studying in the yard or we're gonna do the studying inside. Is it that kind of or? It's exclusive, isn't it? Because it's, it's an inclusive. It's an inclusive or. Exactly, it's the other kind of or. It's the or I say, we're going to do the uh, presentation outside if the weather's good or if my wife kicks me out of the house. Okay, so, if e so I don't have to say or both, but it implies or both. And in fact, if both of these hold, then we have in the, the, the definition of the indifference operator is x weakly preferred to y and y weakly preferred to x. Okay, so sorry, so I just need that for all x, y, one of these things must hold. Sorry, yeah, for any pairings x and y, one of these things might hold. So how do I show that this, that this statement does not hold for uh, the unanimity preferences? Which, by the way, are reminiscent of Pareto optimality, the Pareto optimality idea. Um, because the F clause means that um, it has to be x has to be preferred for every y. So if, x, if there's a unit of x isn't preferred to y, then you can't make a choice between them under the unanimity rule. Okay, so I, let me let me let's, let me write this down. Okay, suppose we have some. So all I need to give is really one counterexample here, right? Suppose I have some bundle bundles x and y, right? And how many elements do you want them to have? Uh, three. Okay, three elements each. So x is x one. Through x, x1, x2, x3, y is y1, y2, y3. Okay, go on. Uh, so for the unanimity, unanimity rule, it has to be preferred in every case. So if it's preferred x1 to x, y1, y2 to y to x2, but not x3 to y3, you can't, the unanimity rule would say that that's not uh, a strict preference between x and y. 
Well, let me say what we've been right. defining things in terms of weak preference. Oh, sorry, but yeah, what you X. say is is otherwise. Yeah, I think sorry, X is not preferred to Y. But it's not weakly it's preferred. Right. So, in other words, you're, I think what you what you said was suppose that X one is preferred by its me by the metric for good one to Y one. I think you said suppose also that Y two is strictly preferred by its metric to x2. Is that what you said? Uh, I messed it up, but that says the same thing anyway, yeah. And in fact, I don't even need to say what the preferences over y3 are. Because this is no longer unanimous. Yeah. This is no longer unanimous. So is, is it the case, you know, just being, di just being complete and formal here, as if I'm talking to a robot or a computer, uh, Okay, so something is weakly preferred if one if if this holds for all i. Okay, so does it hold for the first i? Well, it's strictly preferred, so it's also weakly preferred. Does it hold for the second i? Does it hold? Sorry, I, sh I should should have indexed this one and two, the preference over the first and the preference over the second element. Does it does x preferred to y hold for the first? Uh, yes, weakly preferred and strongly, but strongly implies weakly. Does, is X weakly preferred to Y for the second good? No. No, no because weak preference rules is basically saying that X is weakly preferred to Y, but Y is not weakly preferred to X. Here, Y is strongly preferred to X. Therefore, it must also be weakly preferred to X. Okay, so, and now, so I, but for completeness to hold, I have another fallback, right? So this failed, but I still had another option is y weakly preferred to x, and I think you could see that that's not the case. Okay, so we have showed the failure, the lack of completeness uh, in the case of the unanimity rule. Uh, so, you know, if we as a group said, this is gonna be our preference, uh, there would be lots of cases that we wouldn't really be able to say what's better than something else. Let me, let's just take a, a moment's break and then figure out what to do next. Thanks, I was thinking of...